Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, we start another uh, part two of the previous video if you've just uploaded is 9700 November 2020. Now this is question paper 22 and we are only going to explain in this video question 5 and 6 which were remaining from the previous video. Now let's read the question 5. Uh, sucrose phosphorylase is an enzyme found in some species of bacteria. One function of this enzyme is for the production of compounds that help to protect the cell from harmful osmotic changes in the external environment. So it's an enzyme which is found in bacteria and what it does is production of compounds that help to protect the cell from osmotic changes. Now figure 5.1 shows the reversible reaction that takes place within the bacterial cell. Sucrose plus inorganic phosphate in the presence of the enzyme sucrose phosphorylase we form alpha glucose one phosphate and something which is called x we have the question mark what is this x but we know this is a reducing sugar name the reducing sugar x of course we know sucrose is made up of glucose plus fructose so we've got the glucose here and now we need another fructose here so we remember it we know this is part of the syllabus knowing that sucrose is a disaccharide made up of glucose and fructose so fructose was the answer to that you got a mark for that then it says in the absence of sucrose phosphorylase as a catalyst the reaction shown in figure 5.1 would take too long to occur to allow the bacterial cell to function efficiently Explain why the reaction shown in figure 5.1 proceeds at a much faster rate in the presence of the enzyme. So basically it is asking you what an enzyme does. It's not asking you anything else. It just says without the enzymes, the reaction would take a long, long time to occur. So what does an enzyme do? It lowers the activation energy. The substrate fits into the active side. So the reactants are held together and the reaction proceeds. So no enzyme, the reaction would proceed, but it would take hours and hours and hours. But here it's going to take a very very short time so they asked you this is that it's a catalyst the reaction shown would take too long to occur it would occur the reaction would still occur but it would take ages to occur part c of the question an enzyme that catalyzes a reaction of commercial interest needs to be investigated to see if it is suitable for use in industry for example Immobilized enzymes may be used as they have a longer shelf life than the enzyme free in solution. So we're talking of two enzymes, immobilized enzyme and free in solution. Right? Free and immobilized. So we're talking of two, free and immobilized. Then many industrial reactions are carried out at higher temperatures to minimize contamination of products by microorganisms. Figure 5.2 shows the results of an investigation to compare the activity of sucrose phosphorylase free enzyme free in solution with immobilized sucrose immobilized enzyme at different pH. Now figure 5.3 shows the activity of the free enzyme and immobilized enzyme at different temperatures. So we have got two figures figure 5.2 and figure 5.3 which is going to we are going to now study these two graphs very carefully and then we are going to find what are they asking us about the graph? This graph is figure 5.2 as you can see here figure 5.2 so this is the free enzyme and this is the immobilized enzyme so let's let's just, let's use a color so this is now the I'm, I'm coloring this one now this is the free enzyme and let's look at it let's read it there's a very important method by which we use to read this and then let's use another color let's do the green color i like green and red so now this is the immobilized enzyme which i'm drawing in green okay now if you compare them let's look at the ph what do we have on the x-axis we have the ph now if you look at if you look at this one if you look at the one which is we used uh, the free enzyme now if you look at the free enzyme it works best at about something like this pH so 6.5 so this is 7 and if you look at the other one if you look at the other one which is the immobilized now the immobilized works best somewhere around 6 pH so 6 pH immobilized and the free enzyme working its best 
working its best at 6.5 pH here, 6.5 pH, and 6 pH. And look at the range now. If you look at the immobilized enzyme, the immobilized enzyme works in this area. While the other one, which if you look at the uh, free enzyme, the free enzyme works between this and this pH. So, well, it's nearly the same if you look at the pH, it's not, but it's working best at 6.5 and that is working best at 6 pH. And it has a range of uh, between 4.5 and 8 pH that's working. So let's look at this graph and let's now understand this graph and then we go on to the next graph. Now let's look at figure 5.3. So we were going to look at, we, we looked at figure 5.2, which was the previous graph. And now we are looking at 5.3 and here what you see here is temperature on the x-axis and relative sucrose phosphorylase activity on the y-axis. Similarly here, what did we have? Here we had pH and relative sucrose phosphorylase activity. So we have the relative sucrose phosphorylase activity in both on the y-axis but here we had pH, here we had pH while on this graph we have temperature. So now let's look at the free enzyme and the immobilized enzyme. Now the free enzyme is this one. Let's give it a new color. Now the free enzyme is this one and it is working like this. You see there's a, there's a very interesting difference. And then you see the immobilized enzyme. Now the immobilized enzyme is this one. Now, do you see the immobilized enzyme peak is somewhere here, 75 degrees Celsius. And then if you look at the peak of the, uh, the other one, which is the free enzyme, it works somewhere like here in between this. Now, this is what, 50, 55. I mean, if you get it a little more clearer, 57, 50, and in between 60. 57, this is the one, then there's one here, and then there's one here. So now what we have to understand is that this is the free enzyme. And this is the immobilized one, which we got in green. So it is a very variable. You can see how the immobilized enzyme is working more at a higher temperature. Its peak is at a higher temperature, while the free enzyme peak is at a lower temperature. So you need to be doing this and you need to be uh, doing this diagram, which I've just done like this and understanding this whole uh, graph, the previous graph, as well as this graph. You need to be looking at it very carefully. You need to pause the video and have a look at it and then see what the question is being asked on these two on these two uh, graphs. So the question is with reference to the results shown in figure 5.2 and figure 5.3, discuss which sucrose phosphorylase enzyme free or immobilized is better for use in industrial prose reactions. Now, you have to either talk of the immobilized or the free. So I'm going to give you the points for immobilized and then I'm going to go on to another page and give you the points for the free. Now immobilized, higher optimal temperature, peak activity, 74, 75, 76 or 56, 57, 58, 59, greater range of pH with higher activity. Then if pH changes, less effect on enzyme activity. Then more active at higher temperature, Immobilized are reusable, no contamination of the product. So immobilized enzymes, if you looked at the graphs again, has a higher optimum temperature peak activity. And then you gave me the comparison. This was a difference of something like 17 degrees. Greater range of pH with higher activity. Then if pH changes, less effect on enzyme activity. Then more active at higher temperature. Immobilized enzymes immobilized enzymes were more active at higher temperatures. So you were giving me the discuss which would be a better bet. Immobilized enzymes are reusable, no contamination of product. So these were the points which you could have given me for immobilized enzyme.
for free enzyme you could have given me higher activity at lower temperature so optimum temperature lower so cheaper so cheaper maintaining this temperature and then of course you gave me these differences in temperature then lower optimum temperature still high enough to kill microorganisms so this was what we had to understand is that how we were going to give points for the free enzyme or we were going to give points for the immobilized enzyme then we come to the last question which is question 6 figure 6.1 shows an oxygen dissociation curve for adult human hemoglobin percentage saturation of hemoglobin partial pressure of oxygen a typical uh, dissociation curve and then of course let's look at the question the question was an increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide pco2 is respiring tissues causes the bohr effect sketch on figure 6.1 to show the bohr effect i've done that for you with a red marker so the bohr effect means it shifts to the right and this is all what you had to give me then it says explain how the next point is explain how an increase in pco2 produces the bohr effect and state the benefit of this effect for the tissue now i usually tell this to you when i'm teaching you this actively respiring tissue means more carbon dioxide produced you see why would there be more carbon dioxide because they are actively respiring tissues increase formation when carbon dioxide enters increase formation of carbonic acid in the red blood cell which is co2 plus h2o in the presence of carbonic anhydrase forms h2co3 now this h2co3 dissociates into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions so more hydrogen ions bind to hemoglobin more oxygen unloaded hemoglobin affinity for oxygen decreases because naturally hemoglobin now starts to bind with him uh, with the h positive ions so more oxygen and that of course is very beneficial why because more oxygen is needed for aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration is delayed because if anaerobic respiration starts we going to get lactic acid we don't want anaerobic respiration to be happening so this is the most important thing is actively respiring tissue means more carbon dioxide increased formation of carbonic acid more hydrogen ions bind so more hemoglobinic acid form more oxygen unloaded hemoglobin gives up its oxygen very readily so hemoglobin affinity for oxygen decreases more oxygen to meet the demands of aerobic respiration because actively respiring tissue means more aerobic respiration so more oxygen needed for these actively respiring tissues coming to the b part of the question carbon dioxide is transported across cell membranes of the red blood cell using a different mechanism to the transport of hydrogen carbonate ions it's co3 negative ions name the different mechanism of transport used for co2 and for hco3 negative and explain why they are transported across the membrane by different mechanisms now carbon dioxide is passive diffusion and hco3 negative ions would be facilitated diffusion and why carbon dioxide will be passive diffusion why because it's a small uncharged molecule so non polar can cross the phospholipid bilayer while the bicarbonate is an ion is charged and it needs a transport protein because as you can remember the phospholipid bilayer there is a hydrophobic part and there is a hydrophilic part so this is the hydrophilic part and this is the hydrophobic part so the hydrophobic part does not allow any ions to pass so if we want anything to pass through it what we will need is we will need a channel protein we will need a channel protein which will of course allow it to pass so this is what we need to understand is that channel proteins when anything passes through channel proteins then this is called facilitated diffusion passive diffusion means that it can pass through the phospholipid bilayer and those are usually small uncharged molecules small molecules or uncharged molecules so small uncharged molecules and that's the mnemonic is sum so this is what we need to understand is passive diffusion of carbon dioxide and facilitated diffusion of hco3 negative ions carbon dioxide is non polar hco3 is charged needs a transport protein so that completes uh, this paper thank you
and we will continue with the other videos in a day or two so that more paper twos are added so that you can then revise and hopefully uh, be able to take the exam very soon uh, taking the paper two and five uh, together on the same day thank you